Hello there, I am Matt Williamson, and it is Wednesday. We have one more OTA tomorrow, and then come back next week for mandatory minicamp, and then the players disappear and into the real world for a while, relax, hopefully don't get in trouble, and come back to camp. Not that far away, guys. So today, I want to focus on one player, and didn't work out exactly as planned, but when we're down there doing uh, the drive, we, we usually and we're scheduled to basically get a player every day. And we've got four of them out of eight, and I'm sure we'll get one tomorrow to make that five. But Braden Fajoko sat down with us today, and it was delightful. <laughs> it was really good. And I just want to talk about him as a player, his personality, things he touched on. And I was very, very impressed. And to pull back the curtain, to be very, very honest with you, I listened to a ton of NFL podcasts, you know, pretty much all I listened to. And if it's like, ah, we got a player interview, most of the time I kind of just blow it off, fast forward through it, don't listen to that one. Because I think often players just don't tell you the truth. Or, you know, they just tell you the, the canned answers and, oh, yeah, I'm here for the team, blah, blah, blah. You know, can't wait. You know, love Pittsburgh. Excited to be here, blah, blah, blah. But this one was kind of different. And I'm seeing that as a trend because the guys we've talked to are the new guys, Cole Holcomb, Patrick Peterson, Isaac Salamalu. And they're all really big personality guys. And I don't think that's an accident. I, I think the personality of this team and that doesn't always translate to wins, is improving. And not that it was bad. It's just an influx of energy, a lot of Polynesians. And uh, Fajoko talked about that exclusively. So some things to talk about, you know, is some things he said. First of all, he's very bright. He's very well-spoken. He was very generous with his time. Maybe he was blowing smoke. I don't think so. But he generally seemed to enjoy sitting down with us after a practice. And he stayed after a practice and just chatted with us. And I mentioned the Polynesian background. You know, he calls them the, the Polys. And he was very aware of the Steelers lineage there. You know, of course, Troy. You know, he knows Troy Polamalu. You know, he knows of Troy Polamalu. Of course, everybody knows of Troy Polamalu, and he's a Polynesian NFL legend. Legend, but Tyson Alualu, he had amazing respect for. He went so far as to talk about Chris Fuamatu Malafala, and um, I'm even missing a few. There was a couple dudes he talked about in in history that he was very aware of, of the lineage of Polynesians, and not to went mention the Herbig brothers and Isaac, who I talked about. You know, so. Very aware of that, very proud of his heritage, very proud of how football has influenced that culture greatly over the last few decades. Mentioned guys like Junior Seau and, you know, th those type of guys that have really made a name for themselves with football. Went so far to even talk about Polynesians' body types. He's like, hey, it's a medical fact that my people have better bone density than most in the on the planet. And I, and I, I immediately, you know, joked back or mentioned back i'm like and calves and he laughs he's like that's how you know he's a poly if he got the big old calves he is for real and boy this dude is well put together um let's stay there real quick you know just his body type so i just pulled him up on wikipedia not that i really am looking at any notes or reading any of it he's listed at 6'3 300 pounds which i assume that's what his he was at at his combine whenever it was 301 that is his combine he's 6'2 and three quarters 301 he ain't 301 he's probably 330 325 but not fat i mean he's got fat on his body he's a nose tackle but he is really thickly built i mean dale made the joke that his arms look like my legs um, his calves and lower body are very, very thick and very, very powerful, big, powerful hands. You know, just sitting next to him, you get a better feel for these things than watching them on tape with the chargers or whatever. But he also was very aware of the Steeler nose tackle lineage as well. You know, he's like, this is traditionally a 3-4 team. I know I'm a nose. Sure, I can get a little push in the run game or in the pass game, but... My job is to make sure they do not run the ball through the A-gaps or 
you know, inside the tackles, you know, that's my job. And he even joked, you know, I, I said, boy, I'm sure the linebackers are appreciative. He's like, steak dinners, linebackers buying me steak dinners. I mean, I'm doing my job, you know, just really a joyful person to be around. And that really stood out to me as well. He knows who he is, but he knows where he's going too. I mean, again, the, the Polynesian background, he brought up Casey Hampton a couple times. He brought up Tyson Alualu a couple times and what they were asked to do especially a Lulu, who's a little more modern, of course, in terms of snap counts, things like that. So I was very, very impressed with the personality. You can tell he's a hard worker and very proud of the work and his background um, and seems to really be enjoying the city. You know, I asked him, what's Cam Hayward like in the D-line room? He said, he's in charge. He's the leader. He's the man, you know, like great respect for him. Can't believe that, you know, he said, I collected his football cards and played with Cam on Madden and watched, you know, grew up watching him and can't wait. I'm loving being his teammate. And you know, the big thing he stressed, which remember the team he came from, the Chargers, he's like the fan base. He's like, you got a college right next door and there's all these pit players and everyone's all about football all the time. He's like, basically, but not bashing his old team. The Chargers couldn't be any further from that. You know, we were talking about it off the air. You know, you had to play in some stadiums where you were, quote, the home team, but there was more of the opposing fans than your fans with the Chargers. I'm like, well, you know, that's going to be the opposite. I mean, if Steelers play Chargers and he remembered the game, it's going to be heavy Steeler fans or wait till Steelers go to Vegas, you know, like, and he's like, wow, it's going to be really cool to be on the other end of that. And he's really excited about going to Latrobe and St. Vincent's and all that history. So, you know, this isn't a history test. These teams, these players change teams all the time. They're uh, a big reason is money, you know, an opportunity. They don't need to know the history of Polynesian players here or, oh, Chris Kimiatu was the other name I, that he threw out there that, oh, I wouldn't have come up with off the top of my head or how the Steelers have used nose tackles over the years or Casey Hampton's history here and those type of things. So I just wanted to express that. I was really impressed with the person and take a quick break here and fit in and we'll talk a little bit how he fits in in the D-tackle situation and as a player. So the more I think about the D-tackle situation, usually they keep six. You can make a case to keep seven. Cam and Ogan Joby are your starters, obviously. Um, Benton's not going anywhere, of course. And I'm excited about that draft pick. Same with Leal. Those guys are making the team. I mean, they're going to be on the final roster, barring injury. Those four. And I, I look at the D-tackles more often than not that there's two of them on the field. So those are the four you hope to see the most of. Cam and Ogan Joby eating up snaps, being the starters, Cam being a star. The two young guys, Leal and Benton, more, more, more. And they couldn't be any different, Benton and Leal. I think Benton's a lot more like Alulu. Leal's much more of an athlete penetrator. Um, you know, we know what he is. So that leaves probably two more spots. I think Watt is the new worm or is the new wormly. You know, that they just signed. I'm on Watts. I just called him Watts. Not, not talking about TJ or JJ. I'm on Watts, I think, is the new Warmly, which is nice because much of Warmly's career, he's been thrust into being the third guy, sometimes even the second when two it would be out. But he's really a four. And right now, Watts, who I think makes a team, is a five or six. So that's the depth they have now. I think Watts and Wormley are very capable, you know, very comparable players in terms of value, three, four ends with a little more versatility. But if he's your six, great. Now, Loudermilk, I might do an article on this, but I'm definitely going to do a podcast on it. There's guys like Norwood, Loudermilk, McFarland, that it's put up or shut up time. You've been in the league long enough. You're not guaranteed anything. There's ability there. They were drafted for a reason. So, uh, Loudermilk certainly is not guaranteed anything. Marshall's not a throwaway name either on that D-line. He's not a bad player. And he probably will be making money somewhere in the league, if it's not here, somewhere else. 
But really, I have a hard time believing after drafting Benton, who I don't think is a pure nose where I think Fajoko is. Adams, to me, is in trouble. And to use a Tomlinism, I think Fajoko and Adams are two dogs, one bone. And Fajoko is just better than me, uh, uh, better than Adams to me. And they're slightly different. And I know they're both noses by trade. But like Adams coming out of college was a four or five star recruit going to school. He was a quick off the ball thinking he's Warren Sapp type more so than Casey Hampton. And he's reinvented himself to stay in the league as more of a space eater. But he wants to make plays in the backfield. And sometimes that can be a detriment of getting pushed or you know not keeping your gap. Or Fajoko, to me, is just the better fit of, I'm going to eat this double team all day long and fight and scrap and keep my linebackers clean no matter what, with my big butt and my big thick body and ability to take on blocks. So you have some options it knows, you know, I mean, even Cam can do it and Benton certainly can, will be lined up there at times. But old school, you know, old school nose tackle types, I think you probably just want one on the roster, especially if you only keep 60 linemen. And my bet is Fahoko. And I thought that before even chatting with him, but chatting with him, I was even more impressed with the young man, which isn't a knock on Adams. Maybe he's even more impressed if we sat down with him. I don't know. But overall, it was a very positive experience. I like the signing. I think he'll be very useful. Probably gets the fifth most snaps or fourth most snaps when it's all said and done of the D tackles, which total projection by me because people get hurt and situational and all that. But he makes a lot of sense as does much of their off season. So OTAs have been a positive experience. I keep mentioning as was hanging out with him. So that's a wrap. Talk to you tomorrow. <laughs>